Uh, that, that philosophy created the, the XP-80, the prototype for the Skunk Works, and carried through a succession of airplanes that, that the public would recognize as the, the U-2, the SR-71 Blackbird, the F-117 Nighthawk stealth fighter, and even the, the, the DNA, the, the technologies from those programs are embedded in programs you see today, such as the F-22 Raptor and the uh, F-35 Lightning II. Excellent job, Steve. No, but seriously, did you really think that people in your audience want to hear you talking about the F-22 and F-35? I know there are some gullible people in the UFO research community, but I'm pretty sure that nobody listening to you right now actually believes that the exorbitant quantities of cash that were funneled into the Lockheed Martin Skunk Works program during the development of those two aircraft actually went into producing those two aircraft. Sorry, but most everyone in your audience is probably already very aware that this is just a cover story, and that money really went into developing something else. And how do we know that you're lying? because you also said this. To create breakthrough products in a fraction of the time and at a fraction of the cost that other people, other companies could do. Uh, you can't be super efficient and way over budget at the same time. It's one or the other. You don't have to be a professional accountant to understand that the military is probably not buying toilet seats for three grand a pop. So I suggest you change your tune and start telling us the truth. We deserve the truth, and our tax dollars paid for the truth, even though we know that they are also paying to cover up the truth. And right now, 95% of your audience thinks that you're on that payroll, too, Steve. Your buddy Hal Putoff has done some pretty interesting research into warp drive technology, and I've read several of his theoretical papers. I'm curious why he hasn't talked about any of that stuff yet. I also read about his work on psychological warfare programs like the kind that might try to brainwash people to begin calling UFOs advanced alien threats. Not sure where that term came from, but it sure as hell looks to us like you guys are trying to use this as a stepping stone towards weaponizing space and possibly getting more funding for Lockheed Martin to build those space weapons. Lucy, you got some splaining to do. So since you guys for some reason are too afraid or just not ready to talk about some of these so-called extraterrestrial technologies which defy imagination, which clearly you haven't done your research or paid attention to the internet you are now trying to establish some kind of credibility on, imagination is not the problem, factuality is. So to help you speed this process of disclosure, or what you guys call confirmation along, I'm going to tell you some of the stuff that we already know about, and I'm going to ask you to answer some questions for us about these programs, the kind of programs you should be talking about if you actually want people to take you seriously. Number one, the Thomas Townsend Brown Effect, discovered and known since the 1920s, officially declassified in 2009 that several top secret planes have used the technology over the years from the electrically charged needle nose cone of the X-1 used by Chuck Yeager to break the sound barrier to the leading wing edge and exhaust of the B-2 Spirit or Advanced Technology Bomber. Even though the B-2 was developed by Northrop Grumman and not Lockheed Martin, I'm sure you know something about it. We know that Martin Tajmar of the European Space Agency researched the Bifelt Brown effect and proved that it was ion wind and did not work inside of a vacuum. Therefore, we know it's not electrogravitics. So if you call it that, we'll know that you're bullshitting. Has Lockheed ever experimented with any other advanced aircraft that utilized this effect, like the ARV or alien reproduction vehicle? We also know about Paul Potter's onion drive. Has Skunk Works ever experimented with these forms of propulsion? Obviously, we know that they probably have and have since moved on to bigger and better things because those things only work for really light craft. So given those reasons, I'm sure that you guys can get permission to declassify a lot more stuff on ion-based propulsion R&D. Number two, microwave and beam propulsion technology, including the research that was done into hyper-resonance and metamaterials and other technologies developed under Project Skyvault. Have you ever heard of the term called microwave phase conjugation, and what can you tell us about it? What can you tell us about metamaterials and the research that has been done into some of their remarkable properties, such as invisibility cloaks? 
What can you tell us about the 2002 Boeing Project GRASP based on the rotating superconductor research of Eugene Podkletnov, the Russian scientist? We've already learned a lot more about it, thanks again to research done by Martin Tajmar of the ESA, but I would like to hear the director of Skunk Works speak openly and honest on this. There has been a lot of speculation within the UFO community from myself and others that this might have something to do with the rotating mercury plasma drive used by the TR-3B, which again sounds very similar to what the Germans were doing at the end of World War II with the Nazi Bell experiment. Why aren't you guys talking about that stuff? Tom's clearly heard of the TR-3B, yet you're not talking about this. Why not? I've been talking about this stuff for over a decade now. I've looked at a wide variety of hypotheses for how such an engine, such a heavy engine built out of mercury, which is heavier than gold, could actually produce enough thrust to lift itself. I hit several dead ends trying to come up with a theoretical framework in which this technology could actually work, and I was on the verge of throwing it in the trash as a work of imaginative fiction when I started learning about the Alcubierre white warp drive theory and these so-called negative energy states that it required. A few years back, I had a guy contact me and said that he was from Skunk Works and wanted to share some inside information with me that he thought would help me with my research. He told me that the key to making this warp drive technology work is something called Dirac holes and developing a method to coat the surface of the craft with these Dirac holes, which I then realized are the negative energy states required by the Alcubierre warp drive theory. He didn't tell me anything more than that, and I never heard from him again, and the way he approached me, I felt skeptical, like it could have been disinformation. But the more I looked into it and learned about it, the more it started to make sense. As the mercury is electrically charged and spun, it actually produces a bubble of antimatter surrounding the craft, and that antimatter is actually the key to producing this warp drive field technology. So is this what Ben Rich was talking about when he said, if you've seen it in Star Trek or Star Wars, we've been there and done that. Or, we have things in the Nevada desert that are alien to your way of thinking, far beyond anything that you've seen on Star Trek. Because that sounds to me like he's talking about warp drive technology. And Rich also said that it would be another 50 years before the public knows anything about these technologies. So, Mr. Justice, are you here to help keep those secrets for another 50 years? Because I'm here. I've been here working hard on bringing that number down to just five years or less. In fact, if you guys don't come out with this shit real soon, I'm going to have to launch my own company and do it for you. Whatever you do, please don't fool yourselves into believing that you can keep this technology a secret for much longer. You are losing the information war. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and visit my website for more information.